hello and welcome everyone. My name is Ryan Manuk. I'm a solutions consultant here at FileMaker, and I'm really excited to be your host for today's webinar, where we'll continue our examination of the FileMaker platform and QuickBooks integration, and specifically for today, QuickBooks Online. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out part one of our QuickBooks webinar series located on FileMaker.com forward slash learning forward slash webinars. But today we're joined by Todd Geist, founder of Geist Interactive, who will guide us through the benefits of FileMaker and QuickBooks Online integration. But before we get started, I have some brief housekeeping notes. So for the best experience, we strongly recommend that you participate in this webinar with at least a broadband connection. So if you have any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. Now, during today's presentation, you're going to have the opportunity to type in and ask questions. So let's talk briefly about how to do that. Just go to the control panel, click on the question section, enter your question, and click on send. So we'll try to cover as many questions as time allows at the end of our presentation. But remember, you don't have to wait until then to submit a question. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to Todd Geist. Well, uh, well hello, everybody. My name is Todd Geist, and I am the founder of Geist Interactive. I uh, just want to go through a couple of little intro slides to just cover who I am and what Geist Interactive does, and then we'll dive into the, into the topic of the day. So I've been doing FileMaker since about 1992, um, and I've been presenting at FileMaker DevCon since around 2001. I'm not sure exactly, but it's 2001 or 2002. And I'm also a member of the FBA Partner Council, which is a new advisory board that FileMaker started up this year that has two main jobs. The first one is to, is to advise FileMaker on future direction of the platform. And the second is to provide a communication channel between the, the management of, of, of FileMaker and the worldwide developer community. So Geist Interactive, we are a FileMaker Business Alliance member. Um, we're headquartered in Southern California. We have offices outside of LA and down in San Diego. Um, we build custom FileMaker software. So what that means is we do custom software for businesses and organizations, and we use, uh, we use FileMaker almost exclusively. We do use a couple of other technologies, but it's almost always with FileMaker at the core of everything that we do. We also produce a number of developer tools, one of which we'll be talking about a little bit later in this webinar, FMQBO. But we've got a bunch of others, and there's a couple of them down there, Barcode Creator, which is a, a tool to create barcodes, FM Perception, which is a great analysis tool. And then we do a lot of work with custom web publishing with FileMaker on the back end using Node and React.js. All right, so we're, we're pretty well known for a couple of popular community contributions. Um, the first one, is uh, just, I'll go all the way back about 10 years and talking about database transactions. And we won't get into all the details here, but uh, database transactions are a way of ensuring that the complex scripting logic that you do and your FileMaker systems can survive all kinds of, of weird errors and disasters or things like your network connection dropping. Um, and I've been speaking about that for a number of years. It's a pretty popular topic. A couple of years back, we launched modularfilemaker.org, which is a website for, uh, for encouraging people to write FileMaker code in a modular way, in a way that makes it a little more portable um, than, than uh, sort of the older patterns of doing it. So at that site, you'll find some guidelines for how to do that, and you'll also find a couple dozen uh, modules, free modules that you can download and use in your system um, to extend FileMaker's functionality. And then most recently, we, we got an award a couple years ago for evangelizing a new relationship graph pattern called a selector connector. Um, that has become very popular in the last couple years, and that was a result of a collaboration uh, between us and our and the good folks at seedcode.com, or at seedcode. All right, so we're here to talk about FileMaker and QuickBooks. So I'm going to assume out there in the audience that um, there are a number of you who may be new to FileMaker who don't have FileMaker. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about why we use FileMaker, what makes it special to us, and, and, and why it's such a great tool. And then I also imagine that there's a, there's a number of you that maybe don't have QuickBooks or QuickBooks Online, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. And then I'm going to tell you how we can make those two work together and some of the benefits that uh, you, can, you can realize when you do that. So first of all, I'm going to back up just a bit and talk about what is our core mission statement. And this is it, summarized in five little words. Custom software is a right. 
And that may seem like a funny way of saying it, but we see a lot with a lot of our clients that they get held hostage by manual processes that work just well enough to allow them to get their jobs done, but not well enough for them to achieve any, any economies of scale or to expand or to grow. And the same sort of thing can happen with off-the-shelf software products that you might be using to run your business or um, you know, in the, in, the, in the current era of the internet, we have these software service products that, um, that again, weren't designed for you but allow you to get your job done well enough that you can keep going, but they don't actually let you customize or do anything to make that piece of software specific to your use case. And if they're working just well enough, it's, it's almost like you can, you're, you're held hostage, like you can't quite break free. And so we really want to make the point that you have the right to do that and, you have, and it is possible to do that. Um, another reason that you, uh, you, you want to consider custom software is it's a competitive advantage. If you and all of your competitors are using the same shovel, uh, the same tools, you are all going to dig approximately the same size ditches and there's not going to be a lot of difference between what you do, at least in terms of how your systems work. Whereas if you have a system that is designed specifically for you, you can dig, you can dig much, much bigger ditches or bigger ditches faster, uh, and so you get a competitive advantage. So all of that adds up to, um, to the following statement. We really believe that your system can meet your specific requirements, can give you a competitive advantage in the marketplace, and, and this is another one that I like to talk about a lot. Enshrine your best practices and business rules into the system so that your employees are helped along doing, making the right decisions whenever they are executing the tasks um, that make up whatever it is that you do as a business or as an organization. Uh, remove a lot of the ambiguity about how they're supposed to do things and just make it part of how the custom software system works. All right, so um, the final, so we talked about custom software and why, and why we think it's really important. And to do that, you really need to have a good platform. You don't want to reinvent the wheel. You don't want to do things um, that everybody else has done uh, when it comes to a certain level of the application and I think FileMaker provides that level really, really well. So if you take a look at the FileMaker platform, we really believe that it's a perfect platform for data-driven custom applications. So we're not building video games here, we're not building maybe, um, you know, maybe like simple websites. We are building applications that manage data and maybe a lot of data. Uh, and to do that, you need a program or a platform that um, understands that and has a lot of that, that sort of built into its DNA. And FileMaker does that. Um, it's also this really interesting combination, uh, and, and I think a nice way to say it is that it exists somewhere between programming and a program. So as a program out of the box, it handles a lot of the things that a database application would need to, do, would need to handle, and you don't have to do much to get started. But it is also programmable, so you can program it and customize it, and add features on top of it. Um, what that means is you get something that's easy to start. So you can get started with FileMaker really, really easy, uh, really, really fast. You can be producing um, simple applications really within just an hour or two. Uh, you can start to get the feel for how things, how things can work. But although it's very simple, it also grows with you. So we work on systems that um, that may have hundreds of tables of data and maybe um, even some that have millions of records. Very, very complex scripted programming, pro, pro, very, very complex scripting and logic um, that's handling all that stuff and maybe with up to 100 users or more simultaneously logged into that system. And FileMaker can handle that. So it can start simple and it can grow uh, all the way up with you. Finally, and maybe most importantly for this webinar in particular, is that it plays really well with others. 25 years ago when I started with FileMaker, there, were not, there wasn't a big, huge internet full of services and other types of data sources that you might want to integrate with, but today there is. And it's really important that your platform be able to integrate and talk to and exchange data with all those other systems. And FileMaker can do that, as we'll see a little bit later. All right, so um, custom software, maybe you know, a simple way to, to think about um, what you can do with FileMaker is starting with the very easy things, the manual workflows that you have where perhaps you are taking data from one system and hand keying it into another system 
or your processing paper forms, um, you can rebuild those in FileMaker, and the result will be that you you'll have, they'll be it'll be faster, there'll be less errors because you are enshrining those business rules and best practices into that automation, so that um, they don't get um, they don't get munged over time. So we talked now about custom software being awesome and being a right, um, and we've talked about FileMaker being the perfect platform to build custom software with, but I do think we do need to answer this question, do we customize everything? Do we, uh, do we have to make a custom system for everything that we do in our business? And the answer is no. Um, and the example we'll be looking at a lot today is accounting, and so here's a very detailed example. A profit and loss statement, custom profit and loss statement is probably not very helpful, does not have a, a big, return on, big return on investment for your business because it's pretty standard across the entire um, really country for that matter. Uh, so it doesn't make much sense to, um, to customize things that don't add up to a way in which you can differentiate, differentiate yourself to your customers. So we tell our clients customize what matters and integrate with the rest. So uh, we're going to be looking at accounting as, as the example for that and just to kind of finish the thought on that um, it again is standard across most industries, and it's also really difficult to do. Um, it's very, it's 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 hard to do accounting well. Um, it's a lot of complex logic, a lot of checks and balances have to be put in place. So it's very difficult. And if it doesn't work, you could have extreme consequences, right? You have um, it could impact tax filings, which if they're done incorrectly could lead to penalties and fines. So it's one of those things that's just best left to to uh, to applications that do it really really well. So we talked about custom software, we talked about FileMaker, and now we're going to talk about um, why we chose uh, Intuit's QuickBooks Online platform um, as, the, as the accounting platform that we use um, for, for, for all of our work. First thing to say is it's the leading on, online accounting system uh, around. They have millions of users, and it, um, it's undergoing explosive growth. So um, we now have... We now have one and a half million subscribers, and is they're adding. I'm I'm hearing some some talk. Are we good? I'm going to assume that we're still good. Um, all right, so we're adding 100,000 uh, new accounts per quarter, uh, so it's really experiencing explosive growth. Um, and it's completely cross-platform, which is really the main reason that we looked at it in the beginning. We, uh, we do Mac and Windows work here, but we, um, do, we do most of our work on the Mac, so we really wanted a solution that ran on the Mac, and QuickBooks Online does that. It's uh, completely cross-platform. In fact, they have uh, Mac and Windows browsers supported and native mobile apps as well, both Android and iOS. And sort of strangely, they have a Mac desktop app as well, um, but it's not the QuickBooks um, for Mac app that you've been around for a long, long time. It's the QuickBooks Online desktop app, which is a little confusing, but it's really the same thing. QuickBooks Online just wrapped up in a native app that runs without, in its own browser. So it also has some nice features, which we really like, um, that I think are a little bit different and a little bit of an advantage over the desktop system. One is super easy accountant access, so accountants can quickly and easily um, uh, get into their clients' systems. They have their own version of, of, of account of um, they have their own version of the software. When they log in, they see all it. They see links to all of their all of their customers' accounts, and they can click on it and go right into the system and make any changes or review any reports or financial data that they need to. So it's super easy for your accountants to to get access to the solution. You don't have to trade around um, files like you have to do in the in the, in the old days with QuickBooks Desktop. Also some really nice credit card processing features which we're not going to have time to get into but I do want to make that make that point here. Alright, so we talked about FileMaker being an awesome platform for building custom software and custom software being an awesome thing to do and integrating it with QuickBooks. Now I want to talk a little bit about the benefits but for doing all of that. Um, we're going to look at a case study. So what we're going to look, what we're going to talk about here is a company named Five Inc. And uh, Five Inc. is uh, they make custom trade show booths. So they print 
graphics, high resolution graphics on huge pieces of fabric and they bend aluminum frames and they stretch the fabric over frames and, um, and then they ship that stuff out all, all over the country often, uh, often overnight because the, the way that the industry works is that people are, are usually um, finishing up their, their, their booth designs and getting everything done um, the week before the trade show so sometimes it's being shipped straight to the trade show so it's a very fast paced uh, environment where orders are coming in and things are being shipped and turned around really really fastly really really fast and so they built a a file maker system that does all of their customer relationship management including quoting and um, and and order processing it also does manufacturing inventory and shipping so this was all a custom file maker solution and it manages every aspect of that of that process, even integrating with manufacturing hardware. So they have these really cool um, laser projectors that project the cut designs onto these huge cutting tables so that they can cut the fabric to exactly the size and shape they need to stretch over those aluminum frames. Uh, and FileMaker integrates with those laser projectors so that the people who are on the shop floor when they are um, working on a, on a big cutting job, they have an iPad app on that iPad app, they pull up the job, they click a button that says project the design, and boom, there's the design for that job is projected onto the table. It's really cool. So that's all done in FileMaker. The, the problem was that, um, the problem was that um, they were having to spend a lot of time re-entering customers and invoices and items um, that were being generated in FileMaker all had to be re-entered into QuickBooks along with a time-consuming inventory process that was so time consuming they couldn't do it more than once a month. Uh, and so this was all manual processes. So they hired us to come in and integrate QuickBooks Online with, with their CRM and manufacturing system. So now that data flows straight from their custom system up into, file, up into QuickBooks Online where the accounting department can send out invoices and track accounts receivable and all that information about uh, about AR in particular and inventory flows back into the FileMaker system so that the people in the um, in in the that, that are using the FileMaker system get the benefits of having access to all that accounting data without having to log into QuickBooks Online. So John Nichols is the owner of Five Inc. and, and I think John is is a really interesting guy. Um, he's been a client of mine for a long, long time, and he told me something many years ago that I think is quite profound. He says, I manage my business by managing my system. And so what he means by that is he takes all of his best practices and, and business rules and encodes that into the system so that his people can just do their work by just doing what the system tells them to do. Uh, and, and I think the results are obvious. The business is very successful. It's growing. And uh, now they're able to do things much, much faster than they used to do. Inventory, which was done once a month, is now done every week, for example, uh, which is a really big help for them in terms of keeping their inventory in line with, uh, with their needs. Okay, so that was a look at the feature, uh, some of the benefits you can get when you integrate um, FileMaker and QuickBooks Online. So the question now is sort of how do you do that? Um, what's the technique for doing that? And what we're going to talk about now is a product that we have called FMQBO, which um, is sort of obvious in its acronym. It's FileMaker QuickBooks Online. And it really is all about keeping FileMaker and QuickBooks Online in sync and getting rid of uh, any kind of manual processes you have to do to keep those two things together. So what is it? Let's just talk briefly about what the components of, of FMQBO are. And there's really just two. There's a service that connects FileMaker scripts to QuickBooks Online. So that means that you use FileMaker scripts to talk to QuickBooks Online and exchange data in two directions, all just using FileMaker scripting. So that's the first component. The second component is a simple starter solution that we're going to look at in a minute. And that is the perfect thing if you don't have a FileMaker system yet and you just want to get started right away, you can use that. Um, and it, does, uh, it doesn't do everything. QuickBooks does a few things, the most common things and it can serve as a really good template for customizing and building out your own system on top of it. 
Uh, it does support the entire FileMaker platform, Macs, PCs, iOS, native mobile browsers, um, server-side scripting, uh, pretty much anywhere that FileMaker runs, FMQBO will work. So let's take a look at the simple starter solution. Uh, it does customers, invoices, and items, which is, uh, based on our experience with the first version of this product, is about 70% of what most people do, or at least what most, most people start with. Um, they're selling things, so they have invoices and customers, and they want to have some control over how those invoices are handled, um, and so they want a FileMaker system that they can do that with. So that's what our simple starter does. Um, you can connect and exchange data in minutes with, uh, with, with QuickBooks Online. Uh, it's really, really simple. And then from there, you can customize it to your own requirements and do whatever you like on top of it. All right, so let's take a look at the demo. I'm going to drop out of the slides. And um, so here is that simple solution. It has nothing in it. We're starting with an empty file. There are no invoices. There's no customers. There's no items. It's just um, a simple empty file. So uh, it's a three-step process to get connected. The first, you will need to have a QuickBooks Online account. You'll need to have a full access password to a, uh, to, a, to a QuickBooks Online account. It can be a trial version, but it does need to be, or it can be a, it can still be in trial mode, but it needs to be the, you know, a full version of QuickBooks Online. So once you have that, you can simply click on that big connect button there. And what we're going to do here is first log into our QuickBooks Online account. So we're going to do that. I'm going to use this demo file that we use just to, so we don't wreck anybody's real accounting data during these demos. And we're logging in, and now we're checking for connections to uh, QuickBooks Online, because maybe we've already authorized some. We haven't. So what this is saying here, we're now at, um, at Intuit site, and we're, we're basically asking Intuit to, gra to grant us the access to your QuickBooks Online account. And uh, we're saying authorize this account to be able to use, or authorize FMQBO to be able to use uh, this Geist Interactive demo account we have set up here. So I click that button. We authorize that. And at the end of this process, we're going to end up with an API key. Uh, and really, that's just a, that is just a connection string that basically uniquely identifies this connection to, to your FileMaker file. We're going to use that in just a second. The, the thing to know is that we never have any of your passwords to into its stuff. We don't keep QuickBooks Online accounts. Um, we have some tokens, and uh, those tokens can be rejected by you at any time. Uh, and you can change your API key at any time as well. So once we have that, we copy it to the clipboard. We're pretty much done with the browser right now. We come back here, and we paste that in, and now we are ready to sync. So we're syncing. Um, depending on the amount of data that's in your system, this could take a few seconds to a few minutes, and for very, very large accounts, maybe, maybe many minutes to pull down all of the data um, the first time. Once the data is pulled down the first time, the syncs that occur after that are only looking at the changes. So the initial sync can take, uh, can take a little bit of time. So that's it. Um, we're done syncing. Uh, we now have a bunch of invoices here. We have a bunch of customers. We have a bunch of items. Um, all that was synced down into QuickBooks, and we're able to do that really, really fast. So let's um, let's actually let's see. We're going to take a look at we'll look at this customer here. Actually, let's go look at customers. We'll pick uh, we'll pick James here. Um, I'm going to launch the QuickBooks Online site so that we can start playing with that a little bit. And so let's go and find. Um, Let's go to customers and find that same account so we can start to see some things happening between the two. So there we go. Okay, so there's no invoices in QuickBooks Online yet for this customer. So let's go and create an invoice. And we'll just add a couple of products. We'll add um, a couple of t-shirts. We'll add uh, a logo cap or two, maybe 12. All right, so there is our invoice. Um, and we're going to sync that to QuickBooks Online. Now, every time you sync, it's looking for changes on both sides. 
and it's um, it's taking care of make, uh, bringing those those two different sides together, and it's sent up our invoice up to QuickBooks Online. So let's refresh that page there, and we should see an invoice for that customer. There we do. Let's open that up. Make sure it's the same invoice, and you can see uh, that it is. So that's kind of cool. So let's receive a payment on this invoice. So now the accounting department is able to actually receive payments. We don't have to handle payments in, in FileMaker. We can let the accounting department handle that in QuickBooks online, which is really nice. And let's just, hand, let's just do a partial payment. Let's say we only get $150. So let's save that. That, um, that is going to leave $115 as a balance due on this invoice. So let's sync that and just make sure that that comes back down the way that we wanted it to. And so there we have it. You see $115 um, is down. That's our balance due. And as, so as the accounting department updates um, the invoices with payments, uh, that data can flow back into FileMaker and, uh, and can be available to do things um, to do things with. So I do want to show this running on um, an iPad just to show that it, just to show that that works. So I'm going to bring up my iPad here on the screen. There we go. And um, let's go let's go pick invoices and let's go down to that last invoice way down the bottom here. Click on that. So there's that invoice. So let's uh, add a message. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, how about uh, please pay the balance. So we've got that in there. Now we can sync actually right here on the iPad. Um, right here from the iPad, it's going to sync that. And of course, it already showed up in the FileMaker version. But once the sync is done, it's going to show up in our QuickBooks uh, online version as well. So we will refresh that page. And there's that invoice. And there is, please pay the balance is now, is now up there. So um, we have, we've demonstrated um, a full sync between FileMaker and QuickBooks running on the desktop and running on the iPad, which opens up a lot of a lot of really interesting possibilities. But just to make the case of why uh, this gets really neat is that once you have your accounting data in FileMaker, you can do all kinds of things that um, you can't do easily in QuickBooks or at all. Uh, I'm going to show a really simple charting example here where we are just, this is a native FileMaker chart, really, really simple to make, um, that shows the sales per month. And this, so this data is synced from QuickBooks Online, comes down into FileMaker, and now I can use all of the great custom uh, uh, reporting features that FileMaker has built into it to do uh, really whatever I want. So we get to manage our workflow. We can put rules on when invoices can get sent, et cetera, how inventory gets processed, and we can customize the interface and design custom reports based on data that's in FileMaker and data that might originate in QuickBooks Online. So that is it for the demo. Let's drop back into the slides here. And uh, let's just talk, wrap up a little bit about FMQBO. So um, just a couple of things to know about it. Uh, it's simple, um, but it's also extremely powerful. Um, we looked at the really simple starter solution, and you can use that to get going right away. But it does use the entire QuickBooks Online API, which means that anything that Intuit makes available to do um, you can do with FMQBO. You can do all the accounting stuff, and you can even do payments. I mentioned credit card processing earlier. I'm not going to be able to show you that today, but um, you can do that as well. The other nice thing about it is that when QuickBooks releases new features, which they do, or they add new functionality to the API, um, you automatically get the ability to interact with that API. Like, for example, about four months ago, QuickBooks um, API was, was updated to include deposits. Prior to that, you couldn't um, send deposits up uh, through the API, um, but now you can. And so when that kind of thing happens, when they add new features and functionality, um, you won't need to wait. You'll be able just to use that functionality with FMQBO. 
So let's talk about the scenarios that you might want to use this in. So we talked about using the simple starter solution. If you do not have a FileMaker file already, this is a great uh, little simple thing to start with. Uh, and you can get that um, comes along with the service at no extra charge. If you have an existing solution, you can use the starter solution scripts. And we have some documentation about how to basically repoint the logic of that sync engine that's built into the simple starter solution um, at your own solution. So you can you can basically just make make some changes to those scripts and, and it will work with your file instead of or your database tables instead of its its own internal tables. And then finally again, um, the advanced options are if you want to do things that uh, are well pretty much anything. Again, we expose the entire QuickBooks API. So uh, if there's anything that you want to do that's possible with the API, you can do um, you can do using FMQBO. So, uh, big announcement. So, for, so for those of you out there who may have done um, FMQBO version one, um, this is version two, what you just saw, and it ships today. In fact, um, and we we timed this to go with this webinar. So you guys are the first ones seeing this announcement. Uh, we won't announce it publicly for another couple of days, but you guys get to see it before anybody else. Talk about pricing. Um, we have a free 14-day trial. It is um, unlimited in terms of it's the same functionality as the full version. It just stops working after 14 days. Uh, the pricing is either $500 a year per QuickBooks account or $60 a month, your choice. You save $220 a, uh, a year if you choose the $500 option. So this is unlimited users, so unlimited FileMaker machines connecting to a single QuickBooks Online account. Uh, we no longer track users like we used to in the original version. That just um, was uh, was obviously silly, we decided. Um, and so we, we got rid of that in, in, the, in the new version. So that's it for FMQBO. It's the simplest and most powerful way to sync FileMaker to QuickBooks Online. Um, that's the link to get to it. You can also find it just on our webpage under the product section. It's, uh, it's pretty easy to find. Um, and so that's that. So let's just wrap up a little bit about FileMaker and QuickBooks. So again, custom software is a right. Build your system and use FileMaker to do it. It's a great platform for building custom software. Now, if you integrate with QuickBooks Online, you get all the great benefits of QuickBooks Online, which we didn't. We have, there's a ton of other ones. It does, it does a great job of, of ingesting bank feeds so that reconciliation is super simple. Um, it has the ability to send invoices and get payments. It's got a ton of really great features. Uh, and then keep them in sync with FMQBO. And when you do that, you get some benefits. You get to automate error-prone manual processes. You save a bunch of time. You can share accounting data with a wider audience so your people using FileMaker can get access to the accounting data like accounts receivable without having to log into QuickBooks. Uh, and most importantly, you get to have it your way. It's your system. It's your workflow. It should be your software. So that is uh, pretty much it. Um, here's some contact, contact information. Again, that's how to get a hold of me or anybody at Geist Interactive. Um, we, can, uh, we can, of course, uh, help you with any additional needs you might have around QuickBooks Online, um, doing advanced features, adding other entities like purchase orders or vendors or what have you. We can, we can, uh, we can help you with all that kind of stuff. Uh, and so please feel free to reach out and, uh, and ask us any questions at all. And I think um, that's the last slide. I think we're into Q&A. So I'll just leave this last slide up while we go into Q&A. Does that sound good, guys? All right, sounds great. Thanks, Todd. Fantastic demo. A lot of great information there. Again, if you haven't already asked a question, go to the GoToWebinar go to control panel, click on the question section, enter your question, and click on send. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, we actually had a, a, quite a few people asking whether they're going to get a recording of this webinar. You will. We'll send you a link once the uh, webinar concludes. All right, the first question, Todd. Are you creating yeah. your invoice items in QuickBooks or in FileMaker? And is there a best practice you would recommend, or where should we start from? Ah, so I think, the, yeah, the inventory items. Um, some customers uh, only create items in QuickBooks. If, if that is a process that is not, uh, doesn't change often or needs to be set up by somebody maybe in accounting, then I'd recommend that the, that the invoice, the, the, um, the items get created in QuickBooks Online and then they can just be synced into FileMaker so that you can use them when you create your, your invoice items. 
but um, you can just simply not allow um, not allow new records to be created in the FileMaker version of that items table, so that you can control that. And that brings up a good point. It's a good idea to choose sort of which of the sources of data is the source of truth. So which one should always win? Um, uh, items is one that can go both ways. Uh, customers usually gets done in FileMaker and invoices usually get done in FileMaker. But you know you may have some process where a customer has to get entered uh, into QuickBooks first for some reason, uh, and that's totally fine as well. But the, but the important thing is for for as, for you as an organization or as a company to decide which side should always be the ultimate source of truth. Perfect. The next question. Can you create multiple invoices then sync, or do you need to sync after each creation? Yeah, so I was just syncing just so we could see the we could see the refresh. The way it works actually is every time you sync, it's going to find all of the changes in all of the tables that you have set up to sync, and uh, and send them up. So um, you could do it in batches. You could run this process automatically every 15 minutes. You could run it once a day. It doesn't really. It's really up to you uh, what's best for your organization. If you want sort of real-time AR, close to real-time AR and inventory, you might need to be doing syncing on a regular basis. Um, the good news is we've built into that sync engine the ability to, uh, basically it only allows one sync to be happening at a time. So if somebody else tries to sync one, one is, when another one is already running, it'll just stop. It won't let you go. So syncing is something that you can do as often as you like to, to do, and it will gather up all the changes on both sides and, and sync them. Excellent. All right, the next question, a quick question about the starter solutions. Uh, if the starter solution fully customizable, like can the customers put in their own logos on the layouts, for example? That file is completely unlocked. Um, there's, uh, it doesn't even have admin, uh, it doesn't even have an admin access password. So it's, it's totally open for you to do whatever you like with it. Um, and that means, you, that, means that, that you can go to town. Um, when you do that, when, you know, if, when, when we ship new versions, we will have a way to, to upgrade that stuff. So you can really feel like you should be able to go to town and, and just do whatever you like to it. Um, that's the point, really, is that this is your system. So do whatever you want to do to it. All right. Um, the next question. Are there any FileMaker inventory apps that you would recommend that will interface with the sales and accounts payable data of um, QuickBooks? Uh, or do you have to build the inventory solution yourself? Um, so we have some stuff in-house that we are building out. Um, the problem with inventory is that uh, it depends a lot on what kind of business it is, right? If it's a, if it is simply buying and selling, that's one thing. But if it's buying and selling with multiple warehouses, that's another thing. If it's buying and selling through multiple channels, which a lot of companies do through like Amazon and eBay and stuff, that's yet another thing. If it's a manufacturing process, that's yet another thing. So inventory is a pretty custom thing, but um, we definitely have some stuff that we can share with anybody who's interested in doing inventory. And the good news is, is that all the tools you need, everything you need to do is available through the QuickBooks API so that you can build a custom solution in FileMaker that keeps your inventory up to date. All right, the next question. What are the differences between the uh, desktop and QuickBooks Online? Yeah, so um, there are a few, and frankly, the online version is probably still uh, has less features than the, um, than, than the desktop version. That is changing all the time. They're adding more and more stuff. Um, if you go to, if you do a search for compare QuickBooks Online to desktop, you're going to end land on this page, which Intuit has, has titled Move to QuickBooks Online. Um, so, they, so they pretty clearly want you to move in that direction. Um, and so right here they have a, on this page, they have a, a little chart that shows you some of the differences between, between the two. And it gives you some more information about how to move. And by the way, you can move from the desktop version to the QuickBooks Online version. There's a, uh, if you have questions about that, um, just send us a line. There's a, you have to be careful of a couple things when you when you do that data migration, but that's uh, totally doable. Uh, All right. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next question: Can you set invoices to be paid and have FileMaker and QuickBooks update as soon as the invoice is paid? Um, 
So the answer is technically yes. Um, it's a it's sort of a lot. It's a lot more work to do that. Um, but and we don't have anything out of the box. But if it's a if it's a desperately needed feature, then we can have QuickBooks Online signal your FileMaker server and say, hey, do a sync whenever something like an invoice is updated. I think that, frankly, um, if you are running the sync process on a fairly regular basis every 10 to 15 minutes or as needed, I, I, I'm not sure that's a big need. But if it is, if you really do need something that's close to real time, uh, again, contact us and we can figure that out. Right, perfect. Uh, a few questions about your product, Todd. Uh, what mm -hmm. versions of FileMaker will work with uh, uh, QuickBooks? So we um, we are officially supporting 13 through 15 right now, although we haven't explicitly done anything. Well, let's see. So the starter solution is 13 through 15. The um, the service that does the connection will work all the way back to FileMaker 12. So, um, but we're only officially supporting 13 through 15 right now. Okay. Um, next question: uh, Will your product uh, also work with uh, WebDirect? Yes, it will. Yes, it will. You can even sync from the web direct side. Okay. And you demoed with a star solution and potentially working, um, and uh, put, and also talk about potentially working with an existing solution. Yeah. Can you just comment on how seamless the integration would be with a custom built solution? So the way it works, we have this documented, and, and um, we'll have some videos on this going up in the next couple of days. Um, but how it works basically is we we have separated out the scripts. The, the, the scripts that do the connection to your system in a very sort of ordered and nice way. Um, what it basically amounts to is changing set field steps to basically all you do is make a field map essentially between the QuickBooks Online stuff and your FileMaker table. So you have to say, well, this is where my customer name is. This is where the customer street address is. And that's just set fields in scripts that are already written for you. So you just have to go in and change those to point at, at, your, at your system. All of the logic around doing, like checking for changes um, on the QuickBooks side and on the FileMaker side and managing the syncs so and only one person can do it, only one sync process can run at a time, all that is, is separate and in another part of the scripting. And you don't have to mess with that at all. You really only have to mess with the parts that are specific to connecting up, basically making a map between the QuickBooks um, fields and the FileMaker fields. All right, uh, back to um, uh, usage. Can you uh, sync time information between FileMaker and uh, QuickBooks? Yeah, so time activities is a very common one. We'll probably be doing a sample file on that. Um, just because uh, it's something that a lot of people ask for is just basically have timesheets that um, are better than what you get in, in QuickBooks. Like in QuickBooks, you can enter time, but um, you, then every employee has to have access to QuickBooks. And you can manage that okay, but there's, no, there's nothing around like managing the time. Like there's no, there's no way to say, okay, somebody's time for this week is in, and they're submitting it, and they're approving it. None of that process exists in FileMaker. I'm sorry, in QuickBooks. So you can totally do that in FileMaker, and you can totally have your own timesheet system that is pushing time into, into QuickBooks Online. All right. Um, last question for today. What parts of QuickBooks Online are not accessible via FileMaker? So there are a bunch of things that are read-only that um, you, you can't update, things having to do with the uh, account settings like um, company name and things like that. Um, there are some edge cases that have like specific fields on specific entities that are read-only or can't be changed through the API, but I'm not aware of any major, like anything that, you know, deposits, expenses, purchase orders, vendors, accounts, journal entries, invoicing, payments, deposits, customers, all those are, are available. So if there's anything there, it's, uh, it's likely... Um, it's likely being worked on and it will be released in the future. It, the only thing I see I wish they would improve right away is doing inventory adjustments. There's a manual process, not a manual process, but there's a workaround that we have right now. I would like to see them have inventory adjustments 
um, as they exist in the uh, in the API in the QuickBooks Online version exist um, uh, it exists through the API. We can still do inventory adjustments through the API, but it's just not as nice as the way, as if it was able to use their same their same um, their same UI. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. On behalf of Todd, on behalf of FileMaker, it was our absolute pleasure chatting with you guys. We definitely hope to see you on another webinar soon. Have a great day. Thank you.